one. All right. Uh, I think we've got it running now. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Captain Frank Hawks. We're doing a Star Citizen video today. And um, hopefully this is operational. If it's not, we'll have to do it again. I'll be peeved. Hey! I don't know if you can tell, but this video is on the subject of entry level vehicles from about oh twenty five dollars to about a hundred dollars or so so today we have and mind you i am the way that i am i always will be i did not just get the plain mustang and the plain aurora i instead got the aurora cl which is the only aurora i would buy if i was going to buy an aurora and the Mustang Beta, which is the only Mustang I would buy if I was going to buy a Mustang. Mind you, this model that you are currently seeing, I do... Yeah, this is not the new version of the Mustang. And honestly, we might do a lot of clipping through here. Uh, the last time I saw this ship, there was a lot more refinement. There does not seem to be that now. It would seem to be in the... Pardon my Tron-isms, the de phase of its existence. Slowly, but surely, just sort of fading away. I can't wait to see the new Mex Mustangs, though. I am not a fan of either of these ships. Understand that there are videos like this all over the place. And... Um, I'm going to talk to what I don't like about these ships. Understand, I would not pick on a ship unless I liked that ship for some reason. Um, you will never see a, a ship on my YouTube that I personally would not fly. Okay, I have flown the Mustang Beta. I have flown uh, the Aurora CL. I do not particularly care for um, combat in any shape or form in this game. It's not that I'm a pacifist, and it's not that I'm bad at it. It's just I don't, at this current stage in existence, I don't see a reason for it. So, first of all, we're going to go down my list of things that I don't think should be on ships of this size. Okay, these, if I can get a good view, are basically fighters. They are small, well, medium fighter craft. And as medium fighter craft, it is my personal opinion, medium to small fighter craft should not have a jump drive. I know, I know, you want me to say quantum drive because we don't want any sort of entanglements legally speaking with Chris Roberts the cult of Chris Roberts must continue I recently heard a nitwit refer to those of us who enjoy playing Star Citizen as the cult of Chris Roberts I don't appreciate it there will be a video response to that but understand I want things to be even and fair as much as is possible and we will discuss things appropriately down the road. So, for me, um, there are five questions involved when talking about any ship. Any ship at all whatsoever. Uh, we do have two other ships to do today. And I'm kind of hoping that we can just sort of wrap them up in one big package and get a lot of views. The five points or five questions for ships. Number one, purpose of design. Number two, success of design. Number three, play style. Number four, is it fun? And number five, is it worth it? So let's talk about the Aurora. Currently, this is the Aurora CL model. This is the only Aurora I would fly. It's not because it's dark and all that. It's because, honestly, if I'm going to fly an Aurora, it's going to be as a cargo shuttle. So, first of all, 
as auroras are. This aurora is fairly nice. I like it. Oh, we need to be closer. Just open the door, please. Thank you. And we'll do the same on the other side so that we can, you know, kind of look at things and stuff. There's a little precision aiming problem with my mouse in this game, and I don't know what it is or how to fix it, but I'm going to be investigating that very soon. So, the Aurora class ship. First question, purpose of design. In my opinion, and it is my opinion, remember that whenever you make comments, this is a sport utility vehicle. That's right, I akin this to a little ATV. It really, okay, I want to show you this before we go any further. And I'm going to bitch about things as we go. This little weirdly shaped area right here is where the cargo goes. I have a problem with that. There could be a potential benefit to this area. This little boxed in thing. But mostly negatives. Major, major negatives. That doesn't even have a hook on it. How is it supposed to hold the, the shit in? There's this interesting thing called gravity. Anyways, um, I mean sport utility vehicle because this has no real purpose in combat. It has no real functionality in combat. Um, it has no real functionality anywhere outside of just dicking around the verse. There are a lot of people today who have YouTube videos out who are like, mm, yeah, you should really just buy an Aurora or a Mustang and stick with that until we hit the full universe. That shit is not going to happen. The first ship I bought was an Aurora, and the reason why is because I thought those upper things up there must be wings, and they must fold out in a, uh atmospheric environment. Nothing could be further from the truth. Hot coffee. No, this oddly shaped bird does not transform. It does not turn into either an Autobot or a Decepticon. It does not really have any functional purpose. And outside of the cockpit sleeping area, there is no inside. There is literally an inside to every other ship in game. But there is not an inside to the Aurora. Half of the ships that we will talk about will have an inside where cargo goes, where a bed and a kitchenette may go. Here in a minute, we'll be discussing my least favorite part of the Aurora. Let's go ahead and step in. Now, mind you, if you like to EVA, and I really do like to EVA, we're going to go ahead and close this door. Hey, the ladder stayed weird. Um, let's turn on the power so there's lights. Okay, first of all, this is the most ridiculous part. No human being can fit there. I don't care what is about to happen. No human being with the kind of flight suit on that I have on, which I'll show you here in a minute. It's, it's the Horizon flight suits. A little bulky. And the kind of weapons that I carry and fit there. It's a ludicrous concept. And I'll talk about some of the things that I think should happen to the Aurora. Though most people don't listen to me, so we'll see. Oh, oh, and I turned. What the hell? My hip, my hip, oh, my hip. Okay, so here we are. We are inside the ship. I am not going to turn on the engines because there really is no point. I'm just going to turn on the power. Okay. Welcome to Robert Space Now Industries. let's continue to deter and Check. we'll come back to the cockpit here in a minute. Okay.
Okay. So, this is a fairly confined space. This is what I personally refer to as the bubble. You might note, it, might note that that chair does not turn in any capacity. That there really is no place to put cargo inside here. And as a matter of fact, speaking outside that little cargo ramp, uh, um, ramp or holder or widget or doohickey thingamabobber does not really have any way to interact with if you happen to be holding a piece of cargo in hand. Say, for instance, you were in a dogfight and you won, as unlikely as that is, and you were picking up the cargo of your opponent and you decided to put it in your cargo bay, it would not happen. At least as far as I personally have experienced. Now, there's not a lot here to, to do with, but... Oops, I'm kind of clipping. I just want to show you this, how much of a waste of space this area is. And I know what you're saying, um, what space? So, first of all, let's check out the bed. And then we'll talk about that. Behold, ladies and gentlemen, the coffin of doom. That's right. There is no window anymore. None at all whatsoever. Matter of fact, speaking, that looks like a cushion above our head to make sure that we don't hit our head. No bueno. No bueno at all. All right. I've been in here about as long as I can tolerate it. Let's get out, shall we? Look how small and cramped that is. Itching our nose. Climbing out. Trying not to bonk our head on the very narrow entrance. This by itself is half my point. Okay. Oop, clipping again. That should not be here. There is no reason for it. And I know what you're thinking. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Log out. Log out, dude. No, no. Not like that. Matter of factly speaking, there is a missed opportunity on the interior of the ship. And it resides with that seat. First of all, that seat should turn. You should not have to go around it. Second of all, the seat should move. I'm not suggesting that your lazy ass can't get up here, activate the seat, it turn around. But think about it. In a ship like this, you have to be extremely efficient. It's not going to happen when you have this set up. There's, and so literally speaking, there should be a fold-out kitchenette with a coffee maker right here. And perhaps a fold-out toilet. And a fold-out shower. Nothing else. It's a waste of space otherwise. And over here, we have a chair that does nothing for us. When it should be doing a lot for us. In my personal opinion, the Aurora is a very badly designed ship. It has the potential to be so much more. So, let's ask our questions. Purpose of design. Let's fill in my particular bank blank. Sport, utility, vehicle. Success of design. Failure. Play style. Running for your life. Because that's all that you do in this ship. There is no success at combat because you are not well equipped enough because you are in a fucking Aurora. <clears throat> so you will spend most of your time either sneaking about around people or running for your life. Now mind you, if you are smart and you really know how to use an Aurora, then yes, 
that is completely feasible. You can do the skulk about, you can suppress um, your infrared signature. We're going to talk about that in a later video. Uh, you can park somewhere where no one else could park, turn off all your power, wait for the opponents to pass, turn your power back on with a suppressed IR, and go and do things. You can do that. There are things that you can do in, a, in an Aurora that you cannot do anywhere else. Mind you, they are very, very few things. Very few things. Uh, anyways, uh, the Aurora... Uh, is it fun? It can be. It absolutely can be. Is it worth it? Absolutely not. It is not worth the measly 20 to $50 to acquire one of these. The price point is completely off. I personally would price this at $10, not including package, as in an entry package, which we will talk about later. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this was the Aurora CL. This is the only Aurora that I would get if I was going to get an Aurora. Everybody, please give it the respect and applause it is due. Because anyone who is flying this is living a perilous life and deserves major respect. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we're going to go ahead and put in our Avenger... Titan, which we will talk about here in a minute. Now on to the Mustang Beta. The Mustang Beta, and mind you, it's being redesigned, so my bitching won't be very effective at all whatsoever. The Mustang Beta is sort of the camper of all Star Citizen vessels. Let's see if we can take a look inside, or if we will just clip out. Enter ship. Okay, can we even move around? Okay, so this is what I would refer to as the cockpit. There is something to be said for an Aurora. And I'm about to show it to you if I can, weird, get into the cockpit. See, that seat turns around. Why can't the Aurora seat turn around? But real quick, let me hit Z so we can do a really good look around. Look at this. It doesn't even look like there is a window. It looks like you're surrounded by nothing. It feels like you're on a motorcycle. Matter of fact, let's see if we can turn the power on. Welcome. Your journey Those begins four now. screens are new operational. to me. But, um, yeah, when you're flying through space in a Mustang... It feels like you're flying with nothing around you, with nothing to protect you. You feel like the slightest thing could knock you out of the ship. Nothing could be further from the truth. But nevertheless, look at this thing. She's fast. She's gorgeous, as all Mustangs are. But honestly, it's defective. And I think that's the reason why there's the redesign. Let's go ahead and get out of this seat. Exit! Now, we're going to turn back around. Uh, if you'll let me, you stupid machine. Look at all this wasted space. This is my main gripe where Mustangs are concerned. Is this right here. This huge, vacuous waste of space. This could have been done better. Now let's go ahead and step back here and see if there's something to step back here on. Oh, are we sinking through the floor? No, we're just crouched. Okay. So there are review videos on this. There's the shitter. Here's the kitchen. 
We can't seem to fully stand up anymore. Okay, that's better. There's the kitchen sink, which is oddly placed. There is no stove top, but there is this itty bitty little microwave looking thing. Oh, look, cabinetry. There are functioning drawers, which I probably would have to crouch to do. Uh, which one? Oh, they took away the functionality. Interesting. There is, of course, the bed, which is under a series of containers. Let's go ahead and see what that's like. I'll tell you what it's like. It's kind of like having a 50-pound container on your balls. Exiting out. Look, I'm halfway through the container. That's probably the reason for the redesign. We do, of course, have a fire extinguisher. Let's see if the closet works anymore. No. We do have this lovely area, which is for lounging. Anna. Hey, we don't lounge anymore. Creepy. There is, of course, a device to watch vids on. Let's see if this will interact anymore. No. What about... Oh, no. We just said... Okay. Um, generally speaking, a very comfortable habitat for the uh, individual who wants to tour the universe and do so with some degree of comfort. I used to refer to the Mustang Beta as the Pimp Mobile. I just hit my mic with my coffee cup. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you wish to tour the universe and have a place to meet and greet hot young ladies, this is the vehicle for you, or perhaps hot young men. It's really up to your play style. Now, I would refer to this as a camper, literally a camper, a place to fly around and view the universe and do so without needing to rent a hab or any of that nonsense. This is a camper, perhaps even an exploration vehicle. Nevertheless, it is a vehicle that I do not think deserves a jump drive. Sorry, quantum drive. So, purpose of design. Touring camper. Design success. Yes, very good. Well executed. I, I look forward to the redesign. I hope they don't take away that I'm surrounded by nothing in, in the cockpit feel. Play style. Pimp. Or, well, yeah, that's probably not appropriate. Um... Um, Gigolo. No, no, that's still not okay. Okay, um. Man about town. How about that? No, okay, no, okay. I'll try. I'll, I'll try better. Okay. Um. Tourist. Okay, that'll do. Um. Is it fun? Absolutely it is. Um, uh, Mustangs are zippy as hell. And whenever I say zippy, I mean if you floor it, this thing will go, and it will go fast. Don't hit anything. Please, dear God, don't hit anything. Because if you hit anything, and I have done this, I have personal experience here, you will go tumbling through space uncontrollably, or you will explode. Um, this vehicle is very fast. It is absurdly fast. It is faster than that, um, than the Merlin fast. It's faster than that. It is crazy fast. And I have flown both of those ships, and I can attest to how crazy fast it is. I've always wondered. No, it's just a little divot. Um, is it worth it? Absolutely not. None of the Mustangs are. Not at their price point. Now, mind you, the Mustangs are worth more than an Aurora is. But 
uh, you can't really get into a Mustang for less than $20. The Mustangs being what they are, I would price point them at about around $15. And that's outside of a package. Now, uh, the Mustang Beta, I would put at $30 for no other reason than entertainment value. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of it. Oh, wait, we don't do that. We just click it. Right. Right. Okay, let's get rid of that. And see if we can find a place to put down the other ship that we're going to have today. What size are you? You are size 1 to 2. You will not fit it. You will have to see if there is another place. Size 3. There we go. No, there will be no editing in this video, if you have to ask. All right, today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about the Reliant Core and the Ages Avenger Titan, which currently does not have a uh, package, and honestly, uh, Cloud Imperium should smack themselves squarely in the face. Uh, and I would love to see video footage of that. Uh, we will talk about this ship after this ship. First of all, let's take a look at the exterior. Make sure we open things up. I have to be oddly close to that. Now, <clears throat> this ship does not fly in this formation. Quite the contrary. The wings and the, um, let's see if I can get a pointer going. This area here all turns on its side so that it is a vertical delta wing formation. Meanwhile, this section of the ship stays exactly as it is. And there are videos of that out there, and I will see if I cannot fly these around for you for a bit. In my opinion, this is one of the most poorly designed ships out there. There are guns on only one side of the wing. There is only one... Oh, wait, it's not on here today, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Only one area of the wing where there is supposed to be a laser turret. This ship is also currently in redesign, if I understand it correctly. Um, refueling pole, though you never really see any inner space um, refueling. Uh, let's talk about the pros and the cons of this ship. Pros. It is a really cool, really fast, really agile ship that carries... A dinky amount of cargo and blows up really really well those would be the pros the cons are this is a really cool really fast ship that's very maneuverable and that blows up and that carries very little cargo and blows up really really well it is the only ship of its ilk that has that problem now <clears throat> Before we can continue, we're going to talk about ramps. Since I started playing Star Citizen, I have a problem with ramps. I have a problem with ramps of every different kind, like, and variety. If this ship... <coughs> Excuse me. If this ship is not parked just right, if you are landing literally, physically, on land, and, this, and the nose of the ship is pointed down more than the tail of the ship, this will not touch the ground. Now, in a ship of this size, or in the Avenger Titan's size, that doesn't matter much. But when we start talking about larger ships, like Freelancers and Cutlasses, it starts to make a difference. Also, I want you to look at how deep this ramp is. This ramp severely takes away from the utilization of the space inside. <clears throat> S 
severely. Here is the cockpit. When we are in flight mode, there are a pair of doors here that close, separating the cargo area from the cockpit area. And this seat goes above this seat. Yet the glass stays the same. It's, a, it's an alien hybrid. I don't get it. Now I want you to look very... Or is it right here? Yeah, I think it's right here where the doors close. Could be both. I want you to look right here. Completely unutilized space. This space could go a long way to helping weary travelers. Kitchenette, beds, all fold out. This would do. This, in my opinion, is one of the most poorly designed ships in Star Citizen. It needs a lot of help, and I'm hoping that its rework will be done soon. But let's go ahead and ask our questions, shall we? Purpose of design. I'm going to have to go with the same exact answer I gave the Aurora. It is a sports utility vessel. A better armed, cooler looking sports utility vessel vessel a much better looking sports utility vessel does it fulfill that purpose absolutely not its armaments are shite um, let's let's look at this once again there is a gun on this side of the wing but no gun on that side of the wing and the wing stands vertical during the course of flight same on both sides both of these ends uh, I don't know if it does it anymore um, but it used to be these caps would come off, you could put guns there, it would work out really well. Um, hell, I don't even remember which wing goes above the other. Um, there is a little bit of an issue with aiming with this vehicle because you're, you're accustomed to, um, firing parallel to the deck. You're not accustomed to fighting and firing vertical to the deck, and so it takes a little getting used to. That and the entire HUD is above your head, which is impractical at best. Um, play style. Mostly, mostly um, a combination of skulking about, of fighting and getting blown up, and of... Um, Basically, just just not using this ship <laughs> at all whatsoever. It, it is a very cool design. I really hope this ship gets the upgrade it deserves. Until then, this ship is absolutely useless. Uh, is it fun? Yes, right up until you blow up. Right up until that point. So, you may have noticed, and uh, there was a video that covered this very exact same subject matter. That there are no parts, no components, nothing really to get into. It's pretty much a clean inside. No computer parts to worry about. And the reason why is because they are all in the wings. And your wings are incredibly fragile. You get blown up, you're done. If you can manage to really get to know the ship, and I mean really get to know it well. If I can close the bitch. And arm it properly and really be a master at this. It's a glass sword type situation. Um, it will either cut or it will break. And honestly, until the redesign, this is just not worth talking about. Now, this ship has been redesigned. And yes, once again, it is a complete and total pity that... This ship is not, does not have its own package currently. There is two points of entry. There is the rear and there is the cockpit entry. I may be too close to it. I may be too far away. Behold the damaged state. Let's take a long, hard look in here, shall we? 
it. Hi, yeah. Cloud Imperium, stop this central line bullshit. This does not work for a ship of this size. Cargo should be on the side, not in the center. Oh boy. Somebody's uh, gonna have to yell at them. Uh. So, this ship, as busted ass as it currently is, is awesome. This ship does not have, uh, apparently, any more cargo than the Reliant Core, but it has a lot more going for it. And I know there's a damage state currently. Ooh. But we'll get through it. Look at this nice, comfy bed. It even has a proper pillow as opposed to the bullshit that was in the Aurora. Right now, you can buy the Ages Avenger Titan for $50 in the, in the pledge store under... Oh, is it called? Under standalone ships. But like I said before, there really is no package for it, which is a major disappointment. I really don't have anything to complain about this redesign, except for the inappropriate design of cargo. You ought to be able to fill this thing up absolutely full of cargo and not be able to get in and out this way. That's how it should be. All right, let's go up to the cockpit, which is currently, oh, I don't care. I'm wearing my space suit. See, this seat turns around. Now, weird. Go ahead and turn on power. Aegis combat assist activated. And Systems brief. Let's turn on Z so we can have ourselves a nice look around. I so as you can plainly see, this is very much a fighter, but you also kind of get a place somewhere between most of the ships in this game and the um, the um, Mustang. You get the feeling that you are surrounded by nothing. The view screen is not overly blocked. Um, you do feel like you can completely see and completely do what you need to do and there's a lot of that problem and a lot of, a lot of other variations of ships. Uh, this ship is really, really nice, though. Okay, we're going to exit. See, it pulls out, it turns around, and all of a sudden you're in the next area. I really have not checked to see if anything around here is usable. Uh, but it looks like you've got some sort of video entertainment. A closet of some kind. But yet... No version or form of a kitchen X. I have a problem with this, guys. Okay? This here is a good ship, even with my mild complaint about the cargo ramp. This here will take care of you. It is a, what I would refer to as a large fighter, which means it's perfectly natural for it to have a jump drive. I know, I know. Quantum drive. Um, it has the look of a space shuttle, like a, a modern, a, a current space shuttle in our time and reality, which I absolutely love. I do not like this swoop here. You see it? It makes it look like a penguin, and it already got that bad. <laughs> Reputation, can we stop persisting with it? As you can plainly see, it has a Mat Mantis Gatling gun on front. And I really wish it had two more following it. 
There is a lot to this ship. If you can get under it, there is a lot to this ship. And honestly, um, if it had the cargo that it deserved, this would be on par with the old Cutlass. But it doesn't have the cargo space that it deserves. And I know the old Cutlass did not have cargo space per se, but there was some talks about it and there was a lot of wasted space. Guys, it, it is better to have this filled up and I can't get in here. But I'm just going to do for demonstrational purposes. If I can do it. Closed door. It is better to be forced to come around here and enter the ship this way and have cargo that's worth a damn than to be... Yeah, you don't even see... You don't even see the... Oh, there it is. It is better to do it that way and have a full payload of cargo than to not be able to. Ship. A little glitchiness going on in the background. Um, now, the Reliant Core, if I can, has that benefit. And the reason why I compared the two of them is because of the, the size of the cargo pads and the sizes of the ship. They are approximate to one another. I'm going to see if I can park that Avenger a little closer so that we can get a closer comparison. That's a three... Damn, I can't get it any closer. The The problem with uh, these two ships is the Aegis Titan just simply is a better ship. Flat out. Out and out right. It is simply a better ship. There are several variations of it. And... Oh, damn it. Here we go again. And to be frank, haha, <laughs> to be frank, um, there, there needs to be room for improvement on all ships. You know, there, there is not as much thought, uh, if we could stay in place, there is not as much thought about um, living inside of a ship, which there needs to be. Honestly, what Cloud Imperium really needs is it needs a NASA advisor. It needs <clears throat> uh, somebody who is experienced in submarine construction or in the construction of, let's say, for instance, other type of naval vessels, which would go a long way to benefit Star Citizen. In our next video, we will be doing a comparison between the MISC Freelancer and the uh, Drake Interplanetary Cutlass. This is Captain Frank Hawks signing off. Please do have fun and take care of each other.